sir uh, be take useful of the sessions ask doubt uh, if you have any doubt in between you can ask through the chat box in the last q and a sessions we will be clarifying it thank you kindly take out the session sir thank you thank you thank you so much uh, for the introduction um, i'll be starting with the session the topic of today's uh, uh, session is on demystifying scapular dyskinesis we have uh, we have studied about this scapular dyskinesis in our graduation and post graduation but uh, i am doubt whether uh, you are sure about how to deal with it and uh, what are the issues and whether we really we have to deal with it or not so i will be i will be trying to demystify the at the end if you have any doubts please note it down at the end you can you know ask me i will try to clarify your doubts scapular dyskinesis referred as six scapula can you see my slide the slide is visible sir and the next slide when i i now i move to the next slide uh, no so it's not visible that's what even i could is the network there is stable sir yes sir yeah, yes 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 sir stable it's stable okay sir scapular dyskinesis referred to as a six scapula that is uh, which is an acronym for scapular malposition inferior medial border prominence coracoid pain and dyskinesis of scapular movement so that's what the literature says it's all just theory even if you don't remember about what is the you no know, expansion of this acronym of this sick doesn't matter we'll uh, go to the next slide uh, most of the phys physical therapist we have learned are all around the world we have learned that the scapulo humeral ratio is uh, one is to two that is uh, every one degree of uh, scapula movement there is going to be a two degrees of uh, uh, humerus movement in during normal arm elevation that's what we have studied in our undergraduate even the current cynthia nark in textbook also says the same thing one is to two ratio the slide is not changing i don't know why one second the network not an issue the slide is not getting changed uh okay sir is it a, a ppt format sir yeah yeah it is in ppt format what happened why okay sir so then um, kindly uh, play the slide show view sir ah, okay sir uh, one second ah now it's okay fine okay yes, when, when i put a blind one or it's not happening okay now it's happening let it be like this no no issues so okay. most of the physiotherapists around the world we have studied about 1 is to 2 ratio all of you are much aware of it but in reality uh, the ratio vary from 1 is to 1 to 1 is to 6 uh, but unfortunately none of the textbook tell tell about this this 1 is to 2 ratio is based on just one sample they have uh, derived this uh, they have come to this conclusion so what are the reasons for this variations of movement because of gender age hand dominance whether you are moving right hand or left hand the plane of movement whether you are moving in, in scapular plane or frontal plane or sagittal plane whether you are doing bilaterally so bilateral arm movement or unilateral arm movement speed of the movement different loads different sports and fatigue and pain all so there are so many uh, factors uh, influences this that's why uh, the variation changes from 1s to 1 to 1s to 6 ratio it is not strictly we are not following 1s to Two ratio. So, in fact, we can't reliably say what normal scapular movement means. 
because of such a variations it's very difficult to say that what is the normal scapular movement so this raised the question of whether scapular dyskinesis is a functional adaptation or a pathological pattern whether you uh, know we uh, these are the as it is influencing various factors we can't say uh, whether it is a pathological one or it's a just functional adaptation so if you see the epidemiology uh, around 33 percentage of non overhead athletes have scapular dyskinesis so called scapular dyskinesis yeah. about 61 percentage of overhead athletes also have uh, scapular dyskinesis all are non symptom all are asymptomatic uh, athletes the studies have shown that reduced humeral uh glenohumeral rotation external rotation weakness and scapular dyskinesis are risk factors for shoulder injuries among elite among elite male handball players so that means elite level a uh, high level of competitive athletes the presence of scapular dyskinesis did predict future shoulder injuries so it's a prospective cohort study they have i they have included the players with scapular dyskinesis i followed them up Uh, may some of them developed uh, shoulder pain so who are who are suffering from scapular dyskinesis they developed shoulder pain so this study concluded the uh, presence of this causes shoulder pain but the same group of authors after th- later after 3 years they have come to a conclusion that there is no association between scapular dyskinesis and the onset of the shoulder pain so that is the beauty so this is one of the cohort studies then uh, scapular disc and this uh, systematic review and meta analysis study stated that scapular dyskinesis increases the risk of uh, future shoulder pain by 43 percentage in asymptomatic athletes so here the authors have said that 43 percentage develops the uh, pain uh, if they have, if they have scapular dyskinesis this it's a kind of you no know, it's art of art of convincing people but if you see the other side of the coin you will come to the what is the real picture whereas the 65 percentage of those with scapular dyskinesis did not go on to develop shoulder pain so actually they told the remaining for 43 percent but they did not say what happened to those 65 they did not develop 25 percentage of those without scapular dyskinesis did go on to develop shoulder pain so whether you have shoulder pain dyskinesis or not but the players developed shoulder pain so this is another beauty of the study the scapular positioning predict shoulder pain scapular mechanics do not predict the onset of shoulder pain in overhead athletes that's what this study says and is there any relationship between subacromial impingement syndrome and scapular orientation according to as it's based on the systematic review one of the authors german lovis uh, this was published in british journal of uh, sports medicine 2014 there is insufficient evidence to demonstrate that consistent pattern of scapular dyskinesia in patients suffering from the subacromial impingement syndrome or, or rotator cuff related shoulder pain so uh, you can't say that scapular orientation uh, orientation of the scapula in causing the impingement that's what this systematic review concludes this is another handball load and uh, shoulder injury rate how it says this study uh, give you a you know, wonderful insight that uh, an external load when a player in, you know if you are increasing the external lo- load Uh, by 60 percentage uh, it was associated with two times higher chance of developing shoulder pain uh, the following with irrespective of biomechanical variants so whether you have a uh, scapular dyskinesis whether you have a uh, uh, anteriorly translated humeral head doesn't matter but if you increase the uh, your routine workout or your routine play if you increase the stress of uh, you no know, uh, more than 60 percentage the external load you tend to develop uh, shoulder pain two times high risk of developing shoulder pain but if the same uh, player if they have scapular dyskinesis or they have reduced to shoulder external rotation strength then even the uh, load is sufficient enough to develop shoulder pain so the 60 percentage without any bio, irrespective of biomechanical variables but if they have any uh, scapular so called scapular dyskinesis or anything is there then just increasing 20 percentage is enough to develop shoulder pain so so far we have seen that scapular dyskinesis 
is not related with shoulder pain so if sapler dyskinesis i identified can can we correct it do we need to correct it that is the biggest question now before uh, getting into that let us see some uh, aspect of it scapular dyskinesia in the space this what we studied in uh, any standard textbooks like uh, um any sports if you if you see any uh, orthopedic physical therapy textbooks or uh, uh, you have met have gone through this uh, biomechanics point when there is a space is reducing between the humeral head and the acromion process it is it may cause mechanical impingement uh, and they say that anteriorly tilted scapula and internally rotated scapula and the excessive downward rotated scapula all of them tend to cause subacromial impingement and there may be missing muscles and soft for example pec minor and lack of play tightness may cause uh, down capilla that the muscle so we with our arm the size come for ोट We are doing. We are not. Uh, are we whether uh, fragile? Again, I am repeating the same point here. Your scapular movement is highly variable and is influenced by so many factors. As I said earlier, gender, athletic pursuits, handedness, right or left, age, pain, fatigue, external load, active and passive movements, or whether active and passive. So many things influences this. So, what I would try to say that scapular dyskinesia is nothing but normal movement variability. each one of us have our own way to move our scapula so then let us see the physical examination part uh, the studies have said that uh, the no physical examination test of the scapula could discriminate between those with and without shoulder pain or a specific pathology so scapular uh, motion alterations do not provide any additional examination benefit in diagnosing shoulder pain if you have if a person has a scapular dyskinesia it doesn't mean that he should suffer from shoulder pain so the scapular dyskinesia diagnosis is not going uh, if you if you have identified the scapular dysfunction it is not helping you to diagnose any shoulder pain conditions let us see the reliability of uh, scapular movement tests there is something you uh, know very uh, famous test called the scapular dyskinesis test um, this study they have found uh, they, this author has found the moderate uh, substantial to uh, moderate reliability of uh, sdg test here the active movement with resistance showing apparent abnormal movement so when you add resistance to the arm when the patient elevating uh, you could uh, see the uh, you could see the scapular where you no know, abnormal movements so patients who have weighs less than 68 kg has to be given uh, they have to be given 1.5 kg dumbbells if they have uh, more than 68 kg they should be given 2.5 kg dumbbells and the patient has to elevate the arm in flexion and abduction with the thumb up position with a repetition of 5 at the rate of one elevation and lowering per 3 seconds so in an average speed 3 seconds speed he has to fully elevate and bring it down carrying those such you know uh, the, the weight uh, predetermined weight they have to lift it and bring it back the test is positive if the winging is present uh, or in a posterior displacement of the medial border as we know or inferior angle away from the thorax a dysrhythmia or premature or excessive elevation protraction non smooth stuttering move motion during arm elevation rapid uh, downward rotation during arm lowering so if there is there is any uh, sudden uh, downward lowering or excessive elevation that is dysrhythmia if these two are present when the patient does then the patient is having uh, dyskinesis so it has been rated as normal subtle uh, or obvious a uh, mild or of or questionable evidence of abnormality or consistent or consistent not consistently present then it is subtle then obvious is striking clearly apparent abnormality evident on at least 3 out of 5 trials 
so that is obvious so based on that normal both flexion and abduction were rated as normal or one normal plus one subtle one side is normal one side is subtle still you can rate it as normal subtle is both flexion and abduction were rated as having subtle or normal it is that's it obvious means either flexion or abduction are both were rated as obvious abnormal so in this way this study is rated uh, so this std set is uh, test is very famous test uh, easy to do in your clinical setting to diagnose to if you if at all if you want to make out any scapula disc kinesis you can give such a no 1.5 or 2.5 kg based on patient's weight then you can do such a simple test observe from the big eye flexion and abduction it's very easy to perform and it, it's very easy to say whether it is normal subtle or okay then kibler is a very famous person who has done a lot of uh, uh, he has he was the one uh, spoken a lot about uh, scapula dyskinesis as we know he has given three types type 1 type 2 type 3 these are abnormalities and type 4 said to be normal uh, type 1 is inferior medial border prominent uh, the entire medial border prominent is uh, type 2 and the superior excessive elevation of the superior border is considered to be type 3 uh, so this is what he has given but uh, unfortunately kibler's four type classification is not a reliable method in assessing scapula dyskinesis uh, most of most of the studies failed to establish a reliability for kibler classification of scapula dyskinesis then uh, another another person has come okay when you are classifying into four type then it's a problem so what he he this this author has attempted to do it in a uh, if scapula dyskinesis is there then he has given less. If the Kaplan's dyskinesis is there, then it gives uh, no, no, no for the type four. First type one, type two, type three, he has given uh, yes, and type four, he is given given no. Then the the agreement was better. The reliability was slightly improved. Then another author has come. What he has said, a study to compare all three methods. He he compared the uh, Kibler's uh, type those uh, four type method. He, he uh, also compared the uh, yes and no method, and he also did the study of uh, Meckler's study, that is, uh, no, carrying the weight and doing. Among all this, this author has concluded that uh, he, he found the interrater reliability of uh, kappa value of 0 0.81 in almost all the methods except four type classification. So, Kibler four type classification was not having very good reliability. Remaining all the uh, uh, methods, whether yes or no method or uh, the Meckler method, that flexion and uh, abduction, those methods. In that, almost all the methods having good reliability, STD uh, uh, in abduction, which was only substantial. So, so authors applied two methods to improve reliability. Actually, the word, original STD test was done for five repetitions. This author has improved from five, five from five, it has, he has increased the repetition up to eight to 10 cycles and added resistance as usual 1.5 or 2.5 uh, so that um, the this study has concluded that when you do the std that is capillary dyskinesis test you can have a very good higher reliability when judged in flexion than abduction so uh, if you if at all if you want to do a scapular dyskinesis test uh, if, if at all if you want to diagnose or identify the scapular dyskinesia you do std test give the weight and ask the patient to do it in flexion rather than abduction because only the flexion has very good reliability. So there are other tests. This, these tests are symptom modification test, scapular assistance test. When the patient has complaining of shoulder pain or during arm elevation, if you assist the scapula towards upward rotation, the patient pain will come down. That's it. When you are our scapular retraction test, when you passively retract the scapula using the hand, the patient strength will improve. If they have a weakness while elevating the arm, the strength will improve. That is scapular retraction test. These two tests do not assess uh, do not assess for the scapular dyskinesis. In case of a positive test, you have to improve the scapular muscle stabilizer muscle strength. So these are these two tests are symptom modification tests. By doing these two tests, whether the pain is reducing or pain is remaining the same, or there is no any uh, no. Uh, Change in kind, in fact, or it may be worsening. Just you have to so, uh, look for it. That's it. So, if scapular dyskinesia is found, should it be treated now? So, I have told you first point is scapular dyskinesia is just a movement variability. But 
if at all if you want to see i have given you information which is the best reliable method that is kappa dyskinesia test in flexion carrying either 1.5 kg or 2.5 kg if at all if you want to use any symptom modification procedure use scapular assistance test or scapular retraction test to see what are the changes in symptoms now i am coming to you okay you have found you have used scapular dyskinesia std you have used the test you have identified yes the patient is scapular dyskinesia according to the uh, the textbook description whether you have to treat it or not that is another matter so scapular focused treatment may reduce pain will improve scapular muscle strength but no evidence that it will change scapular mechanics so whatever you have found on sdd uh, after giving treatment the it reduces shoulder pain obviously it improves the scapular muscle strength yes exactly uh, but it is uh, not it is not changing the scapular mechanics so that is the uh, no uh, there is no change in scapular mechanics uh, that is what the systematic review concludes scapular focused approaches may confer benefit over general approaches for 6 weeks not by 3 months so conflicting evidence whether scapular mechanics are improved by scapular muscle strengthening so this is what another systematic review and meta analysis these uh, study designs are said to be you no know, high level of evidence most of the studies have been recently published within 5 6 years so they have also given the conflicting evidence and it is not showing much result good result um sc again scapular focused approach improved pain and function but the improvements were not explained by scapular kinematics there is there was no change in scapular kinematics but if you give any scapular focused treatment the patient uh, pain in reduces and function improves that's it so scapular focused exercise is superior to eccentric rotator cuff exercise in reducing pain and disability but no change in scapular mechanics this study also says the same thing if you give scapular kind of focused exercise okay fine patient better doing better pain reduces and the patient disability also has come down and patient functionally doing better but there after the treatment if any scapular dyskinesia changes means no change in mechanics uh the uh, above one the, the, this this study had used these are the exercises scapular focused approach patient will be doing exercise therab and exercise in scaption plane in prone lying and uh, the eccentric cuff exercise is being done like this uh when the author was asked what do you want to in, a, in one of the conferences this this study first author was asked uh how do you justify this uh, both uh, how come the scapular focused exercises are doing better and what what could be the reasoning uh, he said the most scapular loading exercises are just good shoulder loading exercises that's what he said what he suggested whatever the styles the uh, exercises they have included in this study might have loaded the rotator cuff muscle very well that's why the patient had improved so that's what this author says so then what is the purpose of the scapula why uh, scapula is there what is the purpose of the scapula there why scapula focused exercise do not improve mechanics i have i have projected so many studies none of the studies have changed the so called uh, dyskinesis but the patient pain has come down and the function has improved and one of the authors have given in a conference he has given a justification that whatever the scapular focus the approach whatever exercises they had uh, given uh, those exercises must have must be a you know, good exercise for the rotator cuff muscles that's why the patient improved well that's what the author says so the reason uh, the I, i i try to explain why those exercises what is the purpose of scapula let us see first then you will understand why the scapular mechanics is not improving scapula is suspended by the musculoskeletal attachment of 17 muscles so the scapular thoracic joint is an energy transfer system like uh, if you say the sacroiliac joint which mainly the load transference from the upper extremity to the lower extremity similarly this role of scapula is not to you no know, it's not just provide a stable base of support but to maximize overall degrees of freedom needed to be placed in the hand in space and to absorb and to transfer energy to and from the upper limb so it transference of uh, transfer to, to transfer the energy and to you know 
it 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 is it is not only the stable base of support it helps for the mobility as well so if you see this picture uh, that's if you know if you take the cycle uh, bicycle wheel that if you see this in the central axis point is considered to be the uh, scapula the spokes are like muscles and uh, no myofascial slings and which are which is attached uh, with the other part of the body so it like uh, it, sus it 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 connects with this if anything collapses here or here definitely it will affect this so scapula is suspended in a musculoskeletal uh, musculotendinous sling and transferring force from the axial skeleton to the appendicular skeleton and vice versa that is what the scapula function is all about it just it's a low transference and it transfers the forces muscular forces from the axial skeleton which is there in the spine we call it as axial skeleton appendicular it's a periphery upper extremities so it helps to transfer uh, loading that's it so in this scenario the stiffness of the sling is matters would dictate on the ability of the system to absorb and transfer energy not the movement of the scapula but uh, so why we have to break our head to focus on that upper rotation elevation abduction uh, you, uh, no because none, uh, none of them are related to uh, shoulder pain none of them are risk factors to produce shoulder pain so that's what even if the scapular disc is as there or not that doesn't matter just you load it you try to you know increase the tension of the myofascial sling you try to make it robust to, so that it has the ability to transfer loads because uh, we generate uh, when you place force uh, shoulder will generate a lot of forces so definitely those uh, you have to improve the uh, stiffness of those my myofascial slings so better you that's why you load it but don't focus on mechanics after giving treatment don't don't again look into it uh, whether you have corrected so called those uh, dyskinesia better to load it so uh, now it's time for uh, questions to be asked i have given you the uh, whole idea of what it is but before that before that i will give you the sense of uh, you know some summary the scapula may play a role in elite athletes where marginal gain matters and the load is high so you for all if you want to correct it you correct it for the uh, uh, elite uh, athletes because where even the marginal gain matters a lot and the load is very high the evidence uh, uh, no does not support scap scapula mechanics as predictor for shoulder pain in amateur or average population so definitely it is not a, uh, a, not a risk factor and it's not a predictor many of the cohort studies have said that it's not a predictor for shoulder pain so no need to worry about it scapula and radial cuff are like gin and uh, tonic do not separate them so any scapula loading exercises are going to improve the rotator cuff muscles or uh, uh, no definitely so you you cannot uh, say that if you are giving those exercises you are stabilizing only those scapula stabilizers like lower trapezius or or uh, or or serratus anterior no all these exercises in fact those exercises are the best loading exercises for rotator cuff muscles as well so that's what uh, this is the common sense summary so now uh, you can you can ask any questions if you want i am ready to clarify it yes sir uh thank you sir for the very wonderful session uh, we has we have gotten certain doubts uh, first doubt is by uh, Dr. Jaya Bhuvanendra. Sir, he has asked that what test would be likely to use in pathological dyskinesis following partial brachial plexus injury or even after the quadruple nerve transfer following such injury? Uh, scapular dyskinesia uh, matters uh, when it comes to uh, the brachial plexus injury or when it comes to patients with uh, recurrent shoulder instability, especially. In those conditions, yes, as I said, then the last point, as I said, the sling loaded, you have to load it. Uh, you have to improve the uh, stiffness of the myofascial slings. Uh, in those conditions, uh, you have to uh, you have to work on the rotator cuff muscles as well as uh, these scapula stabilizers. You cannot discriminate between them. Um, what okay. I'm trying to convey you is when there is an instability of the shoulder, when there is those nerve injuries, Better you strengthen it. Obviously, uh, of course, you should strengthen it. But 
after strengthening those muscles you cannot uh, expect whether you have corrected those mechanics or not doesn't matter whether you are correcting it or not doesn't matter but whether patient's functional status improves patient pain reduces it matters a lot okay thank you sir uh, hope jay sir your doubt is cleared and uh, sir we have one more doubt that uh, in usually uh, elite swimmers rounded shoulders are common so is it necessary that we should correct it or no issues in maintaining rounded shoulders reduced to suprahumeral space uh, thoracic uh, postures none of these uh, factors or risk or predictors of shoulder pain so forwarded posture so that's what the according to the current current evidence uh, those factors anteriorly tilted scapula even excessive translation of the humeral head during arm elevation none of them are risk factors to develop shoulder pain to sustain shoulder pain so you 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 focus your treatment by loading those uh, slings uh, not focus on those postures that's what i am trying to convey uh, if you if you focus on those postures corrections and those aspects uh, you may end up in mess so there are certain exercises for example push pull exercise uh, then we have uh, lateral raise exercise then we have kinematic chain exercise we have um, um, landmine exercise so there are different exercises which will help you to uh, load your shoulder joints from different planes so those exercises are very important we have to make ourselves uh, no fit enough to challenge those forces um, that is more more important than correcting these kind of postures because there are numerous evidences have stated that uh, the postural variations or postural asymmetry is not being associated with shoulder pain it is well established according to the current research okay uh, thank you sir and uh, sir our we had got even, even, even i i used to teach my pg post graduates a few years ago till few years ago uh, i when a patient comes with shoulder pain i take lot of effort to check whether the patient has anterior tipping whether the patient has a, a pseudo winging or true winging or uh, whether the patient i you know check the uh, uh, scapular up, up for elevation whether there is an excessive elevation all those stuff uh, but uh, but over a period of time you know the as the evidence and everything literature keeps changing it i have changed now myself now yes. now my focus is entirely different when a patient come to me with a shoulder pain i i i look i definitely i consider the scapular dyskinesia only one case that is recurrent a traumatic shoulder dislocation those cases i load i focus more on you know uh, scapular things as well Okay, sir. Even in the present scenario, also uh, including me itself, sir, we are using the old traditional protocol, sir. So it was a very mind-blowing no, no, session. Sir. Yes. None of none of the none of the scapular loading exercises. Uh, sir, sorry, sorry. All the scapular loading exercises are very good exercise for protection of muscles. Okay, sir. Hmm. It's uh, more of that. See, the scapular disc is there. You are. We are thinking that well, okay, by by this. facilitating lower fibers of trapezius yes, by facilitating status and tear we are trying to improve the uh scapula kinematics so that way we are reducing the shoulder someone has to mute it that's why that's what we are uh, thinking but after giving uh, a lot of exercises the kinematics did not improve did not change but the patient pain reduced us Uh, that's what uh, the current literature says that scapular dyskinesia is nothing but normal movement variability each okay. person moves in their own way i move in my way you move each of our hand dominance is different our lifestyle is different our anthropometric is different our everything is our demand is different some of them no so definitely each scapula moves in our own way we can't say this is right this is wrong in fact uh, that 1 is to 2 ratio was done on one subject and based on that in 1940s based on that still the literature says still the sindhya nark and even the latest fifth or sixth edition books did not change it still our undergraduate students are reading scapular schemal rhythm that is 1 is to 2 ratio 
and still we are giving marks for that. Actually, it varies. It changes from one to one to one to six ratio, and it has wide variability. And just based on one human being, it is up. If we are applying for all the entire <laughs> globe, it is not. It is nonsense. Like it's ridiculous. It has to be like how we are. If you think that based on one one figure, so for example, Amida Pichin, we can't say all the Indians are Amida Pichin. Should our height should be it should be equal to Amida Pichin? No, we can't say that. No, Amida Pichin height height is different. Each each Indians are different heights. Similarly, based on one human being, we can't say Kapla should go in one to two ratio. So, so you know, what about in case of sir? Uh, facial scapular femoral muscular dystrophy neuro conditions they will be also having this scapular dyskinesia so no sir whatever it is that's what i i have not removed this loaded loaded uh, slide okay. loaded loaded there are beautiful exercises established exercises well uh, proven exercises in the literature you have to search it because my part is just the mystifying scapula not the because it's it does not require uh, treatment because it's not a it's not a dysfunction okay <laughs> it's not it's not a dysfunction so it's not required to even first of all uh, so if if i am if i am saying that i am correcting scapular dyskinesia i'm kidding that's all i can say okay sir so you load it you load it uh, even if when you if you think that you are focusing on scapular dyskinesia so obviously it is uh, going to recruit rodent muscles so patient for pain will reduce and function will improve okay thank you sir then uh, sir we had uh, another doubt from uh, mari mutu sir uh, yes, sir please. how come scoliosis going to be related with the scapular dyskinesis again the answer will be loading right sir a uh, scap see uh, that see when i'm saying when there is there is there, there is uh, nothing called the scapular dys dyskinesis uh, um it's uh, we no need to correct it unless it, it matters only in elite athletes but when it comes to scoliosis there are so many other factors to be corrected uh, there are so many things to be corrected not just we no need to look into that only scapular dyskinesia mm -hmm. there are so many factors to be corrected when it comes to structural scoliosis okay sir uh, sir even the functional scoliosis huh. functional scoliosis uh, if you you have to you have to look into the entire kinematic chain provided okay. that it's a is a risk factor for the patients for, for example if they have low back pain or whatever it is even uh, the pelvic asymmetry uh, pelvic uh, rota ro inominate rotations or none of them are uh, related to or exa exaggerated lumbar lordosis or high forces um, none of them are correlated with uh, low back pain according to the recent literature none of them are being associated with low back pain so all these dysfunctions are there so called dysfunctions are there in among normal human beings as well so why we have to correct it and uh, many of them are functioning well without any pain yes. so these are all the see human beings are different we have different uh, lifestyle different uh, activities yes and uh, so there are there are variabilities in structures in our structures as well we no need to break our head to correct it thinking that they have they made uh, they have they are having pain because of these uh, uh so called uh, variable even the uh, anterior pelvic tilt posterior pelvic tilt of 15 degrees is not correct it has disproven long back there is no any specific you can't say this is anterior pelvic tilt you can't say this same thing is applicable for scapula don't assess don't try to attempt to correct it you you first you think that this he has normal movement variability so you focus uh, on something other other things don't break your head to see whether there is a uh, excessive uh, uh, prominence whether there is excessive internal rotation of the scapula whether there is excessive uh, abrupt downward rotation of the scapula whether there is a pseudo winging whether there is a true winging whether there is a uh, excessive posterior tilt of the scapula don't break your head thank you sir uh, hope matimuthu sir your doubt is clear sir we had got another doubt from uh, shiva raman sir that is uh, do we need to consider scapula while doing a rehab for any type of shoulder impingement uh, there are i have i have projected numerous uh, studies ah, scapula yes, uh, uh, the impingement related pain and uh, whether you are focusing on uh, scapula uh, 
capillar focused approach or general exercise doesn't matter they improve the shoulder pain okay the scapular focused exercises also in fact the scapular focused approach was one of the studies i mentioned the scapular focused approach was better than general exercise i mentioned but that that was not improving the um improving the scapular kinematics after that the patient upper rotation and, and uh, the the exact upper rotation and downward rotation did not improve but patient pain reduced so that's what the author said that uh, all the scapular uh, focus exercises may be the best exercises to recruit the rotator cuff muscles or maybe the best exercise to load the entire kinematic chain that's what they have said in one of the conferences one of the that study author the first author said in one of the conferences and they have commented in their discussion as well in the in the paper so it's a waste of time unless they are elite athletes who are playing for olympics or no or or any uh, commonwealth games for them it may matter it may again i'm telling it may matter the remaining people definitely the this kind is that doesn't matter there are set of good exercises beautiful exercises which will help you to bring down the shoulder pain and improve the patient's shoulder disability I, of course now the research has gone to the level of biopsychosocial approach for shoulder as well there are a lot of literature because most of the shoulder pain patients have a lot of kinesophobia and uh, reduced pain self efficacy so you have to improve their pain self efficacy you have to improve reduce their uh, fear of fear avoidance all those stuff are very important uh, so uh, we have to come out of this myth called scapular dyskinesis that's what i'm trying to convey here and and if anybody any students write in there if any students writes in their answer paper that scapular humeral rhythm one is to six ratio please give him full mark if he has not given suppose if he has not written one is to two ratio please give him full mark there is no strict rule yes sir right sir and uh, uh scapular mobility yes scapular mobility mobility is also important and uh, uh humeral uh, mobility also imp important um but uh, the upcoming that there is one beautiful study published in journal of hand therapy i guess mm. strengthening exercises resisted exercises are giving beautiful results in patients who are suffering from uh frozen shoulder so you can go for strengthening exercises eccentric control exercises uh those exercises are giving better outcomes in the patients having suffering from frozen shoulder um, um if at all if you want to give, when you give those exercises automatically the scapula is going to move if if you want to give passive mobilization go ahead that doesn't matter doesn't matter but i am not a fan of uh, those passive techniques uh i was i was using those techniques uh, long back 5 6 years back now i have almost stopped using those techniques i focus more of uh, now so when a patient come to me with frozen shoulder based on their irritability i categorize them into high irritable or low irritable if they are high irritable there is a set of exercises again and if require i go for modality if they are high irritable or sorry low irritable then straight away i'll go for resisted exercises which have the, do especially eccentric control exercises it gives beautiful result okay sir again the scapular scapula if for is if you want to mobilize move it but when you have a better approach when you have another uh, no good uh, uh, easy and patient can move when the pay which improves the patient confidence which brings down the patient's fear you go ahead with those exercises okay thank you so much sir and uh, hope shiva sir your doubt is cleared and our chat box is full with the uh, feedback sir uh, everybody is uh, congratulating the sessions and uh, very useful sessions the comments are coming like that sir very much useful sessions and certain uh, uh, students are asking sir whether the slide will be shared for the future reference um okay i will add i will give it to the organizers but i will add my name i will put my like uh, down i'll add it and then i will share it with, uh, with the organizers okay sir. 
so uh, thank you very much sir for sharing the valuable time with us it was a very wonderful session uh, uh, demystifying the scapular dyskinesis uh, certain unknown aspects we were even the uh, clinicians practicing clinicians were also having uh, rather than students uh, that was also cleared uh, thank you so much sir and also uh, comparing uh, scapula with the cycle wheel it was very interesting as well as very much easy to understand sir uh, because 17 muscles are attaching towards the scapula that and all was a new knowledge sir so uh, thank you very much sir for sharing a valuable time and sharing a very informative sessions and uh, thank you all dear participants for being with us uh, today was our second day of cme uh, tomorrow also tomorrow is our last day so uh, kindly be attentive also uh, all participants are requested to fill the feedback form which is shared in the chat box uh, once, once again uh, thank you uh, dr rajasekhar sir thank you so much thank you all thank you yes thank you thank you thanks to all bye thank you sir